The piece, The Invisible Man and the Mask of Blackness by Zach Ove is about the African diaspora. It is a 40-piece installation with six and a half foot tall African men. It highlights ideals of migration, identity, and race. The artist Zach Ofe received a small African figurine from his father on a trip to Kenya when he was five years old, and it has been with him since he was a child. He reproduced the figure into a massive sculptural installation to represent the African diaspora and what it means to be an African-born man living outside of the continent. He describes it as a tribe of men representing the experience of being African and living in other parts of the world. Zach Ove, born in 1966, is a British artist who is based in London and Trinidad, working with sculpture, video, and photography. His themes reflect his interpretation of the individual experience in immigrants and African culture. The name of the piece pertains to two landmarks of black history, according to the San Francisco Arts Commission. The first one is Ben Johnson's 1605 play, The Mask of Blackness, the first stage performance to use blackface makeup. Blackface nowadays is considered taboo, but the artist wanted to highlight the origins of the long history of the use of blackface and how it was used as a way of making fun of Africans and the diaspora living amongst Western societies. The second milestone is the 1952 classic The Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison, the first novel by an African American to receive the National Book Award in 1953. Therefore, the nearly 350 year span between both literary compositions demonstrates the relatively slow speed of progress while still recognizing how far humanity has progressed. According to LACMA, Ove also takes influence from Carnival, a Caribbean festival derived from the French colonists' Mardi Gras festivities, and Canboule, a parallel event in which slaves enjoyed themselves with music and clothing and gave homage to their African customs. The sculpture embodies the nuanced backgrounds of racial oppression and the emergence of discrimination against black people. Each individual statue weighs approximately 300 pounds, according to Wikipedia. Ove says he strives to reignite and reinterpret lost culture using New World materials, whilst paying tribute to both spiritual and artistic African identity. He uses graphite in this piece to navigate what he establishes as a future world black. Graphite can be mixed with other pigments and be turned into other colors, but Ove chose to keep it dark to emphasize his message. Graphite does have a slight sheen to it, so it does glisten when the light hits it because it is a metallic grayish color. When it shines, it gives the sculpture a very beautiful effect with the metallic gray counteracting with light. The use of lines were added to create a visual effect of texture, like you'd see on a regular human body with lines on the palms. The overall figure itself is not curved in any way. The head keeps the same dimensions all the way to the toes. This makes them feel like an army because they are all exactly the same and have the same purpose, just the way Ove intended them to be. The piece Urban Light by Chris Burden has been unofficially adopted by Los Angeles as a symbol of the city, according to LACMA. Tourists from everywhere visit the Walk of Fame along with the Hollywood sign because it is a staple of Los Angeles, but the Urban Light sculptural installation at LACMA is now among those. Urban Light is made of 202 restored cast iron antique street lamps that are painted a steel gray color. In 1965, Burden was born in Boston, Massachusetts, and he later moved to California. Burden's first significant projects were defined by the notion during the early 1970s that the genuinely meaningful, relevant artwork of tomorrow will not be items, but that art will be intangible and reflect on technological, governmental, societal, and ecological transition. At the Rose Bowl flea market, Burden acquired his two first streetlights. He and his friend and his friend's son noticed two from the 1920s that day. He quickly began obtaining them and it became his passion to restore streetlights. In his studio, Burden sandblasted, power coated, rewired, and otherwise fixed them. The lights all work and are now powered by solar energy as a part of the restoration. Street lamps such as these were representations of a civilized and sophisticated society, safe after dark and beautiful to behold, Burden says, according to Wide Walls. The layout of the street lights is not a seamless pattern. The lights place themselves at varying angles and lines, depending entirely on where the observer lies. The lights turn on at dusk and turn off at 10 p.m. During the daytime, the lights are still enjoyable because it plays with the ideal of light and dark. 
The street lamps are off, but with the daylight, you see their shadows casted on the ground, which is another element of beauty within this piece. It is nocturnal and can be enjoyed at any time of day. The geometry behind it is all curated by Burden and his logic, but when you look at it from any point of view, you can see clearly and it looks almost like a maze where you could get lost in. This is due to the lines of the structures and the spaces in between. The light of this piece is self-sustaining because it creates its own light with solar power. But the color of steel gray that was painted on during the restoration process makes it very attractive for the viewer because it is not a dark gray, it is light and airy. This gives it a sophisticated look. As a viewer myself, I thoroughly enjoy visiting the urban light piece at LACMA. It makes me feel like I'm in the past, yet in the future at the same time, which is what Burden was trying to accomplish. It feels like an escape into a new world where life is more beautiful than it already is. According to APA Los Angeles, the piece itself uses urban planning and knowledge of art to create an amazing display right here in the City of Angels.